<laughs> all right, all right. What's going on, party people? This is your man Griff. All right, look, we're gonna jump right on into it. Um, first I was to say, but I mean, I guess now we're not jumping right into it. <laughs> okay. First, I want to say thanks to everybody for tuning in. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for your likes, your shares. Really, really appreciate you. Y'all great, great members and viewers, subscribers. Thank you very, very much. <clears throat> and I really, really do appreciate you. So if you get a chance, just hit the like button, share, and feel free to comment below whether you agree or disagree with what I'm saying, okay? Um, wow. So this, this topic here, people probably trying to figure out what that means. It sort of means what it says, but it also doesn't, it also means, it doesn't mean what you think it says. It's nobody's calling you out. Okay. First of all, second, this is based off of a, a topic that Star McQueen, Super Notary Moms had in her clubhouse room a couple of days ago. And the question was, do you concern yourself with people who are illegally notarizing? <clears throat> My response was yes, because I understand the implications of illegally notarizing documents, especially when you're doing stuff like split signings or you're part of a group or whatever the case may be. Um, if you're part, sometimes let's say if you're part of a group and one person does something wrong or it's notarization, they may want to audit everybody to see if all the other notaries did something wrong so that's that's one of the things you need to be um concerned about when it comes to illegal notarizations the second part of the question was would you reach out to them and say something and i said yes i would and then somebody either i don't know if i just said it myself without being prompted or Maybe somebody asked a question, but it was like, what questions would you ask them? And I, one of them, I said, I would ask them how long they've been doing this. And apparently a lot, of, well, I won't say a lot, but some people got offended by that and said that I shouldn't do that. Now, in my mind, and I didn't say this out loud, I was like, the question was, what would you do? Had nothing about, do you think Griff doing the right thing? People take stuff to the wrong hill, especially when they possibly are trying to correct you or quote unquote set you straight and i've been getting that a lot not trying to throw shade i don't know what the intent was but i do know me saying what i would do triggered turned the light on whatever you want to call it with um okay all right somebody Instagram at me. I'll deal with that later. You know, so that's what the question was. The question was, what would you do? Would you reach out? It wasn't about, okay, how do we stop Griff from doing that? You can't. <laughs> okay, it's that simple. You can't. Whether you like me calling you or not, if you don't want me to call you, you know I'm on a split signing with you. Just leave a little post note saying, dude, don't call me. Okay? And I will respect that. If you know I'm if you're watching this video now, you get a split sign and I'm going to just don't call me. Matter of fact, if you want to put it in the comment section, don't call me. OK, I won't call you because he, but here's the thing. The reason why I would call and that's the point that nobody ever really asked. And if they did, I might have missed it. The reason why I would call and I didn't even feel like going into it because I didn't think anybody would really listen or think that i was just trying to make up something but if you really think about what i'm about to say you'll understand yeah probably would be okay to call depending on if you me the person who's calling do it in the right manner the reason why i will call is simply this just because that person you know that person over there made a mistake on the documents i get them in and i do it with no problem send them to the title company do you, what is the percent do you think that those documents will be able to be executed at the courthouse if the notary has something wrong with them? The first notary. Because sometimes funding can't even happen if there's certain notarial issues. Signature being missing during a notary act or initial on the page that the notary is notarizing. 
you can basically you can't get paid. So if both notaries is getting paid one hundred and ten dollars for this signing, do you think they're going to pay you, the notary who did it right, just because well I did it right? Okay, but the documents didn't get executed, and when the documents don't get executed, nobody gets paid. And that's the thing you got to understand. So the reason why I would be concerned and the reason why I would want to call is so that I can help myself get paid by making sure everybody else gets paid. So <clears throat> if I see the person who may have did something wrong, maybe we can brainstorm together, me and that notary, or maybe they just have to talk to title and maybe they can come up with a plan to say, OK, let's get it done this way. Let's go on and correct it like this. There's all kinds of of ways it can be done and <clears throat> a conversation needs to be had. But if you're like, I ain't calling them, they're on their own. If they effed up, they effed up. I'm sitting here like, but do you realize letting that slide, just letting it be like, I'm not talking about correcting. I'm not talking about you correcting, but letting it slide where you don't talk to them, or at least give them heads up as to what's happening. Because you might be able to look at the documents and say, oh man, this, yeah, this because this was done the way because the sign. Yeah, we're gonna have it might have to be redrawn. So if you give that person the heads up and let them know what's going on, maybe they could reach out where they're gonna have to reach out to the title company and say, "Hey, I just realized that that that. How do we go about fixing it?" Then they'll come up with a plan, and whatever that plan may be, that's what it is, and you use it. They may come up with a plan, you know, and the plan who they may come up with it from would be your underwriter or your loan officer or somebody like that who say, OK, well, let's check the compliance and make sure that it fits within our guidelines. And if it does, then they'll tell you, OK, fix it this way. Let's keep it moving. That's what this is about. That what the, that's what my premise was in saying I would ask questions because I need to understand where they're coming from, where they're at, where their mindset is in order for me to understand how to communicate or try to craft some words to talk to them about dot, dot, dot. But I get it if you don't. But the question was not, how do you stop Griff from doing it? Question Griff about doing it. Convince Griff not to do it. That had nothing to do with it. To me, all that should have happened was I made my statement. I answered the question. Somebody could have re rebutted and said, well, Griff, I wouldn't do that if I was you because of this reason. Cool. But some of the comments and the way the comments was coming out, I'm like, all right, cool, cool. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But here's the thing. I had it. And here's what's ironic. And this how this is ooh, how 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 things work. While we was having that discussion, I got a text message for an order. Nice paying order. And what I did was I said, well, yeah, I'll do it. Come to find out it's a split signing. It's a split signing that I did today, you know, the day of this video being um, recorded and had a great time. The guy who did it before me, no issues. Everything was great. So then I got to thinking, I said, you know what? How about I just call him to let him know he did a good job? And I was like, what a novel idea. We talked about, would you call them to, you know, to inform them that they made a mistake? Well, how about just calling them and say, hey, you did a good job. And that's what I did. Lo and behold, he's like, hey, Griff. I'm like, wow, you talking to me like you know me. He's like, yeah, I watch your videos all the time. Bam. And see, this goes into what Cheryl was saying. She was saying, well, because Griff has so many videos and he's out there on YouTube and on his platform, a lot of people may know him and may not have a problem with him calling them. And that's what happened today. So I'm sitting here like, wow, this is awesome. I love this. So me and him had a great conversation. We talked about groundworks because he's doing that now, making money, all this. And see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, do, 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 do. What I was trying to do. Oops, where is up oh, there? It is. Here's the thing. This is what you gotta understand. I'm all about trying to help people. 
and see people do their, their best. I get that my methods may not rub people the right way, and that's fine. But the people who might get rubbed the wrong way, pretty sure you probably never hear from me. You probably never get a phone call from me. Because to be honest, most of y'all are really on point with what you're doing. So I see no, no nothing wrong with reaching out to somebody, especially if you care about people. If you care about people and it's not just based on, oh, we're cool with each other because we grew up on the same block. We went to the same school. I care about people, whether you went to school with me or grew up on the same same block as me. I don't care. If you need help, let me help you. Let me provide some type of assistance if I'm in a position to do so. But what I heard is a lot of people like, if I don't personally know you, you ain't come up around where I'm at, you're in a different state, dot, 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 you're on your own. And I don't think that's the way it should be. So me and him had a great conversation, talked about Groundworks, um, how, you know, it's helping him make money. And here's, and here's the other thing. Are you helping people to make money? Or are you taking people's money? The things that I do are designed to help people to make money. And I'm not charging them all kind of fees, if any, depending on what it is. So I'm fine with helping people to make money, but I'm not trying to take anybody's money from them. So again, the question is, are you helping people to make money or are you taking people's money? It's a simple question. And he was very appreciative of me giving him a call. We shared some, some, some tips about what to do with your profile, all of this. And cool. And then he's only been in it a year. And I didn't even have to ask him because I looked him up on the NNA site because he was using the NNA all purpose jurat and effort and um acknowledgement. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, he got to be an NNA member. Looked him up, what's going on? We dapped it up over the phone and had a good 10 minute conversation. And I told him, if you ever need any help, let me know. He said the same here. And boom. So not everybody is going to be triggered because someone reached out to them and asked them, do you need some help? Or you, it looked like you was trying to do this, but you might have misunderstood the instructions or whatever. It's OK to reach out to help people. But if that's not you, then you don't. But I will say this. Answer the question that's been asked. None of what happened the other night should have happened, in my opinion, had people stuck to the question that was asked. What will you do? Had nothing to do with what would Griff do? Do you think Griff doing it right? Do you like Griff? It had nothing to do with that. It was all about what would you do if somebody dot, dot, dot. 